Young scientists, filmmakers, educators, we are Ocean Scientists for Informed Policy. Join us as we travel to Lima, Peru for the United Nations Climate Change Conference and dive into pressing ocean issues and their connection with international policy. I came to the COP because I was interested in seeing how ocean science in general was translated into global policy and policy that is supposed to have a goal of affecting change and beginning to address climate change on a more substantial level. Peru is one of the places on earth where global climate change is affecting ocean conditions and those changing ocean conditions can have a, an effect on this country's fisheries. Now, usually when I travel, it's something that's really interesting. I, I try to check out fish markets and see, go to the grocery store and see what's there and what are people catching wherever we go. And it's an interest that I, that I have no matter where I am on Earth. So we went to Pukusana, which was about an hour and a half south, and we were able to go down and take a look at the fishing port and realize that it's, it's mostly, down there it's mostly small scale fishermen, it's guys on small boats. I knew Peru had large commercial fisheries, that there was, you know, Peruvian anchoveta, everyone knows, or is known as this monster, monster fishery, and Peru has very, very rich coasts. The two avenues that commercial fishing goes on on a global scale is you either have large corporate, huge, huge fishing vessels, hundreds of feet long, or these very small scale local boats working. And in Peru, you see both of those, and you see them clearly without a baseline understanding of what's already there or what was there prior to fishing pressure or what is there currently at this current level of pressure, it's really easy to upscale the fishery to the point where you've, you've now overfished your coastal systems. Peru seems to be a country with a lot of fishing going on, but not a lot of research about the fish. Tenemos muchas especies que se aprovechan, sin embargo son pocas las que tienen programas de manejo, reglamentos de ordenamiento pesquero o alguna medida de manejo. It seemed like the group at WF Peru was doing a lot of work to put together information about the, the fishes that people are catching here. It was actually really heartening, especially speaking with WF Peru, to see that some of these issues were already starting to be addressed before they really started to be a problem. The Peruvian government invests a lot of money in large-scale fisheries research, but it's really only based around one species, uh, this anchoveta. I'm able to talk to some graduate students that are working on different aspects of anchoveta. It's nice to talk to younger students that are working on kind of these larger fishery issues. Like, I don't work with um, these kind of big-scale commercial fisheries, but these guys were really passionate about what they did and were really into studying dynamics of this fish and they realized that this fishery actually has the almost national importance to Peru. Like, it's an issue of national pride but it's also a huge industry. It seems like that there's a significant amount of hope that, that there are concerted efforts between conservation groups and fishing groups and to kind of ensure that Peru can maintain this kind of huge artisanal fishing industry but heritage and keep that going for the future.